Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up for you. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.68 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 0.4%. 68,100 plus for Bitcoin at the moment. 3,800 plus for Ethereum. 112 billion plus market cap for Tether. XRP at the number eight spot at 51 cents. We're off 0.4 on the 24 hour and 2.9 on the seven day. Range of price right now is between 52 and 53 cents. I want to remind you guys of this Louisiana reaffirms gold and silver is legal tender. This is why I tell you about Glint, which you can get on Link to private equity platform. Yeah. And they also told us, CEO of Glint told us at XRP Las Vegas, 25 other states in the United States are also considering making gold legal tender too. What do you think that would do for the private equity of Glint Gold Pay? Come on in. Just saying. And what do you think it'll do to you if you decided to go buy physical gold right now at 2300 bucks an ounce? What's it going to be a year from now? Look, I tell you these things because, first of all, at Miles Franklin, all you have to do is put in the email, info at milesfranklin.com. Put dig gold, D-I-G gold, in the subject box for the best prices on all the metals and offerings that they have on the website. That's all you have to do is send it to them and tell them I said to come on in. Right here, we see what's going on. Again, the contrast in the industry. And why is it everyone has such a time bringing up the fact that Ripple has championed the fight against the SEC? They're the first ones to take up the fight in the real way and win for the entire industry, not just for Ripple and XRP. Take a listen to this from Kraken's representation. I think the most recent filing was to, again, try to dismiss the case altogether ahead of your hearing on June 12th. How are you feeling about uh, the status of all that? Look, this is a case that never should have been brought. It was about one year ago I testified on behalf of my client, Kraken, that the SEC would have to share the jurisdiction it was claiming over crypto with other federal agencies the, like, like the CFTC. We don't think they like that because exactly one day later, almost down to the hour, we got the call saying they were going to sue us. We don't think this is a case that ever should have been brought. And as a result, we're moving to dismiss it. Um, we put in our moving papers a little while back. The SEC responded. We had one last chance to reply. Now the case is fully briefed. So uh, in a few weeks, we'll go in front of the judge of the Northern District of California, and we'll make our, uh, we'll make our, our oral arguments. We'll actually argue before the court uh, the, uh, the same things we argued in our moving papers. The SEC will have a chance to rebut, and uh, there will be a live argument, just like there was in Coinbase, just like there was in Binance. There, uh, there are similar cases. Yeah, similar cases like Ripple. Don't be afraid to say it. We were out there championing the effort early. I tell you, who else has a problem saying it too? Is Ryan Sean Adams? Yeah, naming everything except the Ripple case. What is it with these people? It's unbelievable. Nevertheless, how many times? And we have talked about this over the years on this channel. How many times have we as retail investors had the opportunity to front run Wall Street? Not many times, but this is one of them. The, the U.S. launch is it's an extremely important milestone on this journey of normalizing the asset class as well as um, bringing things onto the blockchain in general. And so I think it's very, very constructive. Still, almost all of the money is retail. Um, which is interesting. Um, even with BlackRock's great success, almost all that money is retail. There's just inherent demand. Usually in investing, retail gets the last look. Here uh -huh. they've gotten the lion's share of the benefit of a $60,000 coin, which is nice for retail to be a winner. Is it? Yeah, it's nice for retail to be a winner. And look, that, that's the, that's the, that goes for this space in general. We are in front of Wall Street. That doesn't normally happen. That gentleman is absolutely correct. And how grateful I am that we're all here and with the awareness to be in this space. Stuart Alderati points out, 
This is the contrast of where we are, and this is why it's so scary to be in this space. And this is why I salute all of you that are hearing my voice right now, because it takes some real stones, some real intestinal fortitude to be in this space. And this is something you'll be able to share with your family, right? Your children and children's children that you were able to be strong enough to navigate all of the pitfalls and things that are happening and all the FUD and the negativity. You know, uh, this is no FUD here. The White House has been trying to squash crypto. Stuart Alderati points out here that obviously, you know, the White House really taking the bad position of vetoing the bill that was to repeal SAB 121 from the Securities Exchange Commission. Stuart Alderati highlights, I'm no political savant, but alienating the 20 percent of voting Americans that own crypto five months before the election seems like a losing move. It sure does. And it really really is the kind of thing that makes a lot of people scared to come into this space, but we're here. And then I want you to hear this too, because this is Chris Dixon here at Consensus. Talk, listen to this. This is because of bad policy. And I, and I, and okay. I, I could argue this very effectively because I do it day to day, which is the people building utility are the ones blocked. Okay, like this is what is so incredibly frustrating is that the people that exactly when you get in trouble is when you add utility according to the current thinking of regulators. Okay, and so you're actually incentivized to do something like a meme coin. By the way, meme coin, I mean one that has absolutely no utility because people say different things. I'm not anti meme coins, all these crypto Twitter thinks we are. I'm just, I'm just, I'm anti a policy that says, that you can't do anything in addition to a meme coin, which is the current policy. And I know that because, you know, I can't, God knows how much we've spent on lawyers and our team, our companies have spent on lawyers and how many conversations I've had that are very frustrating. The default has become for most of these projects now to block the U.S. Like I, many, many projects now, they block North Korea, Russia, Iran, and the U.S. Like this has become the norm in the space, which is just, I just think it's absolutely uh, tragic. And you know what? There isn't many times I'll agree with Chris Dixon, but this is one of them. And this is an uncomfortable truth that many in crypto don't realize yet. And it's what if you are an XRP holder, a Ripple shareholder, you absolutely understand this. At the point the regulators have let most of the scams thinking like Phoenix Fire token scam and tokens with no utility such as a meme coin run wild while they attack those with real world utility. This is exactly right from DAI and Chris Dixon here because it's exactly what's going on. But you know what? The prescription is about to be flipped. They're going to flip this script because I think he's got it right here. Don't get caught chasing crappy green candles with no utility. The adults have tried to tell you over and over how this story ends. I think 99% of all crypto probably goes to zero. Brad Garlinghouse, Pets.com was awesome. Until it wasn't. That's DAI. And you know what? Um, and maybe it was Brad Garlinghouse too. But I know this. Uh, I know this. This is spot on. This is spot on. And you know, uh, it is right. And what is about to flip the script here is regulation and legislation. Imagine when Fit 21 goes through these projects that bring utility to the financial system, that complement the financial system will be the ones that are saluted. They'll be the ones that are coveted, right? Right now, it's being punished because everything has to go through this legal gauntlet and not to mention the fact that the banks themselves have been trying to push pause on this technology as hard as they can. But that's all about to change. Right here, you can see the contrast in the way uh, innovation was looked at. This is pointed out by Robert Leshner here. America cheered cryptography when it hardened our communications and helped us win World War II. Our administration is currently hostile to the idea that crypto can be used to harden our financial markets and systems and make them more efficient. This goes right to exactly what we're talking about. Crypto being targeted. Crypto utility being targeted. Jeremy Lair backs it and says, I agree. Crypto as a technology will harden our markets and lower risks. He says it will make the dollar more competitive. It will provide a layer of new security around our data, identities, and computing. It is necessary next layer of the internet infrastructure. Absolutely and well said. 
And then this is a side note, but I want to update everybody right here. Yassim Mubarak shares here, Jack McDonald, the CEO of PolySign, will be joining Ripple as the head of institutional custody after the approval of the acquisition of standard custody by Ripple. He goes on to say here that he's told by a trusted source that as soon as Ripple's acquisition of the standard custody is approved by the regulatory authorities, which should happen within one to two weeks, both Ripple and PolySign will issue a joint statement as to the future of standard custody and poli sign. And I'm excited to hear about what that may be because like you, if you are in poli sign, I have a huge position in poli sign and would love to know what the future looks like, good or bad. So let's get to it. And then I want to remind people of this from Standard Chartered Zodia Custody. Ripple Custody Partner announces staking deal with Fortus. Here you see a digital asset lending service staking and ETP custody. Stake, lend, and earn interest on your assets to institutions directly. Love seeing all of this. Again, utility, providing infrastructure, providing custody. This is what we need to have, and we're all being targeted for it at the moment, but that'll soon change. This here, Ripple, says an accelerated shift to instant payments across Europe, and that's what they're identifying by moving to the new technology that's available that Ripple provides, as well as many others. And obviously, you can save massively when it comes to that if you switch to instant payments, continue to move uh, forward March as the transaction method of choice for consumers, businesses across Europe and the UK. Uh, It says here, entities like European Commission are behind the progress working to build more resilient financial infrastructure to make instant payments universally available. This is massive, ladies and gentlemen. Look, this tells me that it's coming, and it's coming in a big way. And we know that we have to have the same rules across the EU, clear information on payments, fast and instant payments, consumer protections, a wide choice of payment services. Don't forget, this month, June, MICA goes into effect. Ripple pointed out in further in this uh, write-up that they had here that, that companies in Europe, uh, payments can cost as much as $30, 30 pounds or 30 euros uh, for a payment, and they offer a better solution using digital currencies and digital assets. Now, think our stock exchange and what we hear every day, and we don't hear really squat about digital assets or cryptocurrency, but that's not the same for every stock exchange. Germany's Frankfurt Stock Exchange is talking about XRP becoming a world reserve currency, ladies and gentlemen. This ought to tell you even more so that the world is a very big place and what the narrative here is at home in the United States is not everywhere else. And you know what? This gentleman right here, Oliver, I believe his name is, and shout out to him, is amazing, smart man, and he has been tracking this better than anybody I've seen on the level of stock exchanges around the world. Take a listen to what he's showing here. And it's the question, how groß is the druck of the central banks CDBCs zu implementieren, der zeitliche Druck, so schnell wie möglich etwas zu tun gegen diesen drohenden Kollaps. Und äh, da wird man natürlich auf das zurückgreifen, was da ist. Ripple ist da mit seinem Angebot und wenn die Zeit für Ripple spielt, dann kann äh, Ripple durchaus die World Reserve Bridge Currency werden. <laughs> you heard it right there. Well, I tell you what, uh, I, I agree with him. It has a chance to become the world reserve bridge currency, not replacing anything, but complementing the system. And I think that's going to be very handy when we see how the United States is going to be forced to deal with the spillover shocks of dollars and bonds coming back home. The BRICS alliance is spearheading the de-dollarization movement across agenda across the globe. Developing countries are finding the initiative lucrative. And this is even more reason why we need things like XRP to serve as a bridge currency to deal with these spillover shocks of the U.S. dollar coming back home. And then there was this right here, the BRICS alliance spearheading that de-dollarization movement across the globe and it getting traction. Cody Carbone from the Digital Chamber says, read otherwise, U.S. reacts to de-dollarization campaign by sticking to collect their collective heads in the sand and ignoring common sense stablecoin regulation, which could help fight said campaign. Absolutely, Cody. You can't say it any better. Shout out to him for saying it in the Digital Chamber. Meanwhile, 
BRICS getting more traction, Thailand declares its strategic move to become a member of BRICS economic bloc, further deepening its engagement with the global emerging economies. This means something is going to have to be done. You're not going to be able to do this on your own said timeline. The United States is going to have to pass legislation or run the op- run the uh, uh, the very real possibility of not being a leader in this space. Space, and then having the world dictate to it what is going to happen. And I don't think the United States, no matter who's in charge, is going to go for any of that. Now, I wanted to share this. June 1st, Cutter Bank, uh, QCB, announces the launch of Digital Currency Project here. It doesn't say anything about Ripple or XRP, but this is QC Bank. And I wanted to highlight as a reminder that there is a relationship between QNB uh, and Ripple Partner, which is Qatar National Bank. Now, whether they're the same, change their name, whether it's two different banks, I don't know at this point. But what I can tell you is I'm showing it to you to show that there is a relationship with Ripple deeply in the banking system in Qatar. We will see what happens from there. Meanwhile, keep your head on a swivel, ladies and gentlemen. Dark Defender says here, the coffee cup is showing us we could have a target of $1.33 with a 76% plus increase. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. It says right now in the chart, XRP is very oversold. So it wouldn't take much to send this baby back in the right direction. That's going to do it for me. We're going into the freedom zone, ladies and gentlemen, and you are going to want to join us today. I tell you what, there is so much evidence going on about where this world is headed, and it's a very dark place, but we're going to show it to you inside the Freedom Zone because it's the safest place to do it, and it's a VIP conversation happening in there as well. You can join the Freedom Zone at digperspectives.com or the link underneath the video, digperspectives.com. Click this video, click this uh, button for the Freedom Zone, join for next to nothing next to nothing. Help support the channel. Get everyday videos with zero Google ads plus extra content in that VIP conversation as well as full access to a private telegram group as well. I will catch all of you on the inside. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. Come on in. All right. Welcome back everybody. Let's do this. 